bastard. Okay, one of the things I like to do is put in defrost right off the bat, kind of get it a little more workable in there. This is pretty nice. That looks like that's flashing. That's nice. Probably help if it had some insulation on there. I'm assuming that's probably what's going on. Well, there's a reason why the uh, thing's all frozen up. They ain't got a flipping insulation on it. See if this clock working. That's comforting. I don't know, I always love a love it when we have a defrost clock. It's kind of just every now and again. Time's not correct, which is another reason why I don't like that. Kind of curious if it's working. I mean, the coil's not frozen down there, so we're here for a fan. I'm gonna go ahead and put her into a pump down. Hopefully that works. Yeah, this thing's got issues. I can hear the clock ticking away. If you're gonna run 3D frost, I like to see them spaced out. Coil's not frozen, just this is. Now one thing I'll mention, this does have a cooler before it, so the humidity levels are probably gonna be a little lower, so that's probably why they may have removed some of the defrost, but I uh, went ahead and put it equally. That way, if the clock gets out of whack, everything will be equal. Otherwise, it might be tuned more during the day or more at night, not during the day, so it's more equal. Wow. So, obviously, this one's one that's not running, so we're going to check that out. And this one's got a busted frame. Okay, so this freely spins. What's happened here is this is completely shattered off. The coil's pretty clean. I can feel that it's really hot. Chances are the motor's taking a dump. We can check the capacitor, but either way, in this case, I generally just change the motor. They're cheap enough that it's not worth taking the chance of having to come back later. Okay, we're checking it, and she comes in at two feet microfarad. Two microfarad, so we're good. The motor's junk, and she's hot, so. Star whinings, whatever, I don't know. This one here, we're kind of screwed. Um, what I've seen done before is you can wire tie it. Uh, there's really not a lot you can do other than just replace it. All right, so it's a pretty common motor. There's my little bag I use for when I don't need a whole lot of anything special, just basics, meter, suppliers and stuff, so. Pretty popular little motor for small, small reach-ins. Thermostat that everybody's complaining about. Here we go, the 9656. This one works out pretty good. It's reversible. This does have the two plugs on it, so you got the really wide one and the uh, thinner one there. This one takes the wider, so I usually tape these two together so they don't come apart. Nothing like the call back for wire coming undone. Like I said, I went ahead and taped this here. Got this all in place here. The uh, heaters were starting to put off quite a bit of condensation. So I made sure I put it back to where I had it at, about 22 minutes. I would say the termination probably doesn't work, just judging from what I see here. And then when I hook this together, I'll put a wire tie around it so it can't fall out of place. Um, I had to take this bracket out to uh, get it in there, which that don't even look equal. Yeah, get one higher than the other. So anyhow, I uh, had to cut off the bolt studs on the backside, and uh, otherwise they'd hit the coil. It's a pretty tight fit, but it fits. I got thinking about it. This don't have a headmaster, so it has a fan cycle control. Obviously that would cause us some bubbles in our sight glass, so and the fan should have been shut off as uh, for where we're, what temperatures we're in. So probably got a problem with fan cycle control too. That fan's not shutting down a touch, not even a bit. They go down there and make sure the rotation's correct. Now one nice thing is the fans didn't come on immediately, so that means our delay is actually working. So maybe our termination switch was 
was working. I hate when everything's just falling apart. It makes it really difficult to try to do a good job. It really does. And that one was backwards. All right, I figured. All right, went ahead and calibrated it out here. Got it in super sniffer mode. This is the Stratus. Let's see how this thing does. This is the first real life test we got on it. Let's see what it got going on. Scan her around a little bit here and just see if we pick anything up. I'm going to recommend we insulate the refrigerant lines, place the fan cycle control, order a new bracket for a uh, fan. and get this head pressure control changed. You got to backseat this so that we can remove it. So I've got that there. Now we can go ahead and undo it. Definitely use double wrenches. And they thought just they had a fan motor out and you get here and there we go, let all that off. And it's coming back up a little bit. There we go, good. I found out why the fan switch didn't work. Somebody doubled it up, so they found it bad at one point, bypassed it, never changed it. So we'll go ahead and get that changed. Still waiting on my impact from Milwaukee. The thing wasn't even a year old. The trigger was starting to go out first. I ended up giving away both my impacts to my father-in-law and dad. So I borrowed the oldest one back. It's still working, which is pretty sad. That one's been through hell and back and still still works. All right, so we're shutting her off about 210 area. It fluctuates down to about 205. That gets you down to the 90 degree mark. And then bars are on for about 265, which puts us about 108 degree saturation. That should be adequate for what we need, so. My goal is so that when it's warmer out, that the fan stays running and doesn't fan cycle during the uh, summertime. So try to find a happy medium. So we got that in there. So let's see what our sight glass is doing now. It's still bubbling, which it is. So we're gonna add a little bit to it, which ain't a humongous deal. I don't think it's super low. Right there, we're solid, so we're just a we're just a little bit low. So I think it's just not been uh, serviced for quite a while. Got all of our tubes and stuff away from everything. Like I said, the weather's kind of making it a little more difficult out here. Staying pretty clear. We're starting to flash. It's about ready to. So when we add a little bit to it, that should be good. Okay, we're just adding and washing our side glass to see where we're at, keep her solid. No bubbles at all that time. I added just a little skosh. Let it a little bit more. I'd say we're doggone close. About a pound and a half right there. Okay, let's still get a little bit cold yet. Let's take her up to 1.75 area. Let's see how that does. Not seeing any bubbles at all. Just a little itty bitty like a little goldfish bubble. Let's go ahead and just put her in an even two pounds. That's probably explain why our TXV is all froze up down below too. We had a uh, crap load of uh, ice around it so you know that TXV was flashing especially with no fan cycle and it was low on charge both we got nothing there so I'm gonna stop at that just because that receiver's not very large so I should finish this one up here uh, 
uh, fixed a defrost issue, fixed a bad fan motor, leak checked it, didn't find anything. Uh, it's low on charge and a bad fan cycle control. So yeah, all those things combined. Just always something, always something. Our pressures look about right. A little high on the head pressure there. I think I can come down a touch. About 10 pound shut off, 20 cut in, so we're about right on the suction. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it quits on that, so we're good there. Okay, I'm a little concerned about this. It's vibrating really bad. Let's see if we can organize it a little better here. Maybe it's gonna sit there and act too stupid all. Either wrap it with our stuff or I'll put a wire tie around it. Let's see how that does. Yeah, it's picking up a lot of vibration. Yeah, we'll just wire tie it. Today's gonna be one of those days where we're gonna just get it done. I've got to work on their slush machine yet. Close to me. So we're good there.